Hey you guys, welcome back to Angel Angela. On this um, topic, I wanted to come on here and talk to you guys about how this is the narcissist world. Once you go through narcissist abuse, you will see the world, you will see yourself, you will tap into your intuition, you will tap into your senses, you will tap into, you know, um, your animalistic side you know um a lot of times when you're dealing with a narcissist they're doing things that doesn't make sense to you they're doing things that they're not ashamed of they're talking to you crazy they're behaving in ways where it's not normal you know jumping over tables you know throwing things they're they're catching a fit you know they're driving crazy um, road raging, yelling at you while you're driving, you know, um, they're not rationalizing anything. They're like wild animals. You know, when they talk to you, you're looking at this person like, wow, you're so fucking wicked. You're like a wild animal that you just, you just cannot be controlled. You know, the narcissist does not like control. The narcissist feels trapped. The narcissist feels like they're in a box and no one else understands. They're like, I'm in this box and no one understands. I'm in spiritual jail. And they don't care about other people. They don't care if you feel exactly how they feel. You know, um, they don't care about how you feel, how you think. These are like wild animals you know, like zombies with no conscience, you know, it's like for so many people, I think to myself, for so many narcissists to do the same thing in different ways, you know, um, when you run across these type of people, they're like wild animals and they all do different things in different ways when they prey on supply or when they're looking for resources, when they're willing to steal from you. Um, they have different tactics. Some do things right in front of you. Some do things behind your back. Some get caught and look you in the eyes and, and swear they didn't do what you know you just saw them do. You know, um, they, you know, they're like, it's like going to the park and you're feeding some ducks and then all the ducks start coming like, you know, it's like a crab in the barrel type of thing. That crab is trying to pull you down. It's like this competition, very animalistic, you know, and you almost feel like they're not human because you feel like you're civilized. You feel like there's enough resources, there's enough opportunities. Um, you almost feel like, you know, you can you can go and, and make something of yourself if that's what you want to do. Um, but the narcissist wants everything given to them. They want to come to you and take your snack, take your food, take your supply, take your energy, anything to get energy out of you, you know. Um, when I think about a narcissist, I, I think of an animal, you know? I think about how animals behave, you know, and the difference between a lot of animals and human beings. You know, you wanna, you wanna compare yourself almost because when you're dealing with a narcissist, they take you out they oh it's almost like they take you out of your humanity and they bring you down to their level and now you start to do things that you would never have done before you know you're they get you to the point where your anger just overtakes you you know um i remember one time just being so mad at the narcissist and we were going back and forth and we were getting ready to eat dinner and they were just being so disrespectful. I remember I just grabbed this rotisserie chicken that we had just bought that we were going to eat for dinner. And I just grabbed the chicken 
and just threw it at the dog outside and let the dog devour it because I was so upset. But it was because I was so used to going through crazy situations where they did things that didn't make sense that it was almost like they were bringing me into my natural habitat where I'm not rationalizing. I'm just doing things. I'm just acting on impulse. And I've never been that way, you know. So the narcissist brought me to the point where I was acting on impulse. You know, they get your emotions um, so jacked up that you think it's love. You think it's love, but a predator just hunted you down. So when you act on impulse and you get angry or you throw things back at them or you finally fight back, you're fighting a predator back. Your natural intuition, your instincts are telling you to fight back. So in those moments, those moments, the narcissist uses those things against you to gaslight you, to make other po people believe that you're crazy. And they're the same ones. But the only reason you even tapped into your animalistic nature is because they brought it out of you, you know? And it's almost like in the midst of anger, you're not rationalizing your, your boundaries or your humanity. You're not even rationalizing anything. So it's not until the narcissist took me into their world that I realized how savage the narcissist world is and how scavengers, scavengers just like them are everywhere, right? So this is the narcissist world. Once you get out of the narcissist cage that they have you in. They have you in a cage, treating you like a dog, like a slave. Once you escape that cage, you know, you're filled with anxiety, you're filled with trauma. Um, you're on guard, you're paying attention to everything. You're moving differently. You're in and out of places. You don't want to stick around for too long. You're more cautious about who you talk to um, because you know that these people are constantly praying. You know, you know that some of these people are, you know, looking for reasons to interact with you. You know that certain people are, you know, approaching you in a very predator way and they want you to act on impulse because it's something within them, themselves, that is reacting on impulse. They want you to behave the same way. They're like animals, you know. Um, so when you leave the narcissist, a lot of us spend a lot of time in nature. We start to pay attention to the world around us. We, we, we find comfort in nature. We start studying animals. We start studying the world. It's like we wake up to a new world, right? It's like we were living in this little fairy tale world, and now we wake up into a new world, and we realize that everything around us isn't what it seems. People are not what they seem like. You start to look at yourself in the mirror, and you're looking at yourself, and you're like, damn, I'm really a human being. You know, you're studying animals and the behavior of animals and how similar animals are to humans. And you're just like, a lot of humans act like animals, you know, a lot of humans act like animals, like they don't have a brain, like they don't have a conscience, like, like they're just living off this artificial intelligence that they were programmed on because we're all you know, a lot of us are speaking a, a primary language in order for all of us to communicate with each other. And, you know, the only thing that separates us from, from animals, it's our means of communication with each other. You know, so it's almost like 
you start to see like, you know, where did this language come from? Animals communicate with each other. They obviously don't know what we're saying. They're speaking a different language. You know, um, you start to pay attention to everything. You know, you, you, the reason a lot of people turn to nature and, 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 and things like that when they leave the narcissist is because you're trying to get back into your primary state, which is being an animal yourself, understanding that you're an animal yourself, understanding that animals kill, animals hunt, you know, animals fight each other for food, for supply. And you realize that you were nothing but supply. You were nothing but a shield to the narcissist. You know, um, when I spent time healing, I realized, wow, I'm really a human being. I'm really, you know, uh, I'm capable, you know, I'm capable of so much. The narcissist um, instilled so much hate in me. I hated them so much. You know, um, you go through a stage where you love them, you miss them, then you kind of get angry, you're upset, you want them to get their karma because you realize that you were nothing but food to them. You were a means of survival to them. And then you find yourself trying to survive in this big jungle filled with savages, you know, and you realize, you know, how important it was for you to make sure that you keep all your means of resources and connections um, with people even, you know, it's, it's not good to be out in the jungle by yourself because these people are lurking in every tree, you know, look, analyzing you, you know, so I realize as a human being, we're capable of so much. It's like, you know, when you're young, you know about predators, you know that these people are everywhere, but you don't know, you don't think that you're ever going to run across bad people. And then when you go through this abuse, you realize that the bad people had been around you the whole time. You were judging people by their physical appearance thinking that they're human beings just like you and some of these people are not even human they're like wild animals that don't know how to control themselves don't know how to control their anger don't know how to control their problems and not until you feel that intense anger and that intense need for survival you don't understand why these people are the way they are um so you do grow from this situation and you do realize that hey you're you're capable of the same things the narcissist does but there's something different about you there's something different about you there's something different about the way you move you have emotions that the narcissist doesn't have you know so it's like what separates me from the narcissist because you know they're like like I said, like wild animals, you know, luring you in, you know, ro roaring, you know, looking for supply, looking for energy. You could be minding your own business and these people will treat you like they know you. They will talk to you like they know you. They will act like they're so tough. They try to intimidate you. Um, you know, they make assumptions about you. Um, they size you up, you know, they, they feel like they're invincible. They're above you. They're very just arrogant, disrespectful, hateful, spiteful, you know? Um, so you realize that you're, you're capable of the same things that these people are capable of, but yet you're not doing half the shit that they're doing, you know? Um, the narcissist will bring out the type of hate in you, you know, where you almost have to, you almost have to analyze your own thoughts, you know, 
it gets to the point where you'll hate these people where you'll wish death on them or you'll you'll feel like if they if they mess with you again you might just snap you know you keep forgiving the narcissist you know telling them you love them and you keep forgiving them please don't don't hurt me again please don't do this to me again I will forgive you. I'm going to forgive you because I'm a forgiving person and I love you. But please don't do this to me again. And they do it to you again because to them it's like, don't you know that I'm a predator? Don't you know that I've already preyed on you? So there's no such thing as going back. You can't expect respect from a predator. You should know that I'm going to bite you. A snake is still a snake. You should know this. And moments like that will make you snap into your animalistic side. You know, this is why some supplies, they snap, you know, they start keying the narcissist's car, you know, flatten their tires. You know, the narcissist will bring you out you know, bring your animalistic side out, but because you have a conscience, you know, hey, I can get in trouble, you know, hey, it's not worth it, or hey, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm just temporarily mad, I'm just temporarily upset, let me not make any choices I'm going to regret, because it's in my nature to want to defend myself, but the narcissist, is setting me up for failure because they're such pathological liars that they're going to find a way to make me look like the crazy person. And a lot of times they, they get away with it. They get away with it. They make you look crazy and they, they learn to become very calm. You know, when, when stuff starts popping out and, and people start coming, they know how to victimize themselves. They know how to make it seem as if you're the one who escalated things to another level. So, you know, um, that's what I realized during my healing journey is that, you know, I realized that I'm an animal. And, 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 and I said this to someone, I said, wow, like, you know, human beings are very incredible compared to to animals you know because if you study a lot of animals you know there's there's animals who kill their 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 offsprings there's mothers who kill their offsprings who kill their offsprings as well you know for survival you know they feel like they can't take care of all their kids and they kill them you know there's human beings who kill their own children and you're you're looking at them like they're monsters. You're like, oh, they're fucking monsters. They killed their own babies. Or there's human beings who are cannibals, who eat other humans. There's animals that eat other animals of the same species. You know, there's, you know, male animals who kill the offsprings of, you know, women that are not women, but animals, female animals that they're trying to mate with, they will kill your offsprings because they don't want to, they don't, they want to mate with you and they don't want to take care of animals that are not theirs. They don't want your offsprings, but they want to mate with you. So you have animals that prey on the opposite sex animal and literally kills you know does attempts to you know kill the offsprings just to be able to mate with you there's human beings you know who male are considered male narcissists who come into your life they know you have children they come they rape your kids, they molest your kids, um, you know, or or they just talk bad to your kids or they just verbally abuse your children 
or they just, you know, they act like they care about your kids and then they want to have their own offsprings and then they end up treating their own offsprings better than their stepkids. You know, they pretend like they like their stepkids because they know it's the human thing to do, but their natural instincts is telling them like, this ain't my kid. I detest this kid, but I know it's wrong. So animals and human beings are a lot alike. And I remember I told someone this and they were kind of like, you know, um, they're like, human beings are not animals. We're not animals. We're, we're humans. We're humans. And, you know, we're animals with a very high level of intelligence, you know, compared to, you know, your typical animal. There's something special about humans, but it's in human nature to do sick and twisted things. We've been programmed to behave. We've been trained. We've been hand fed. So I'm not making excuses for the narcissist at all because I feel like for us as empaths to be able to understand this and to have enough intelligence to not act like animals and kill each other and, and molest and, and rape and act animalistic the way the narcissist does, you know, it says a lot about the empath's intelligence. And I feel like that's the difference between, you know, the narcissist and, and empaths. But the difference, but the most important thing, the most important thing about this is that we live in the narcissist world. So once you wake the hell up and realize that these predators are everywhere and they're like animals, they're like wild animals. And they don't have a conscience. They don't see nothing wrong with their behavior. They feel like it's in their nature. They know that it's a lot of narcissists that are sick and twisted. They know that there's other narcissists like them. They try to act like they're so special. But yet there's other animals that act and behave just animalistic as them that are into the same things that are killing your offsprings, who are, you know, um, trying to take a sexual advance at, and, and groom, you know, supplies or take advantage of, you know, there's, there's, there's animals that, that sleep with their own offsprings, you know, you realize that the narcissist is not a human, a human being, they're an animal. And once you learn that and you understand that there's predators everywhere, like I said, you realize that you were living in another world. You were living in the sophisticated world. You were living in the world of, of what you were designed, what you were trained to be. You were fed lies and propaganda and um, you were taught how to talk, behave. You were taught to, to, to walk on your, on your two feet, you know, instead of walking around like Tarzan, right? So, um, a lot of us, you know, have a, a, a certain type of intelligence, but it's because of you know, the human intelligence that has has evolved us over time. And even though human beings have evolved in many different ways, even physically, you know, you got people out here who mentally are not, they haven't evolved enough to, to the program of what it takes to be a good civilian you know, to work 
in this in this you know to work around other people to to live around other people you know as soon as you walk out the door to the narcissist it's the wild jungle you know so once you wake up from this you realize when you step out your house you you better realize that there's all type of human beings out there and they're just as bad as animals they're just as bad. They're just as dangerous as a as a lion, as a tiger, as a bear. You know, lion, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my, they're everywhere, right? Um, what I also feel like, um, you realize once you wake up, you know, out of the matrix, um is that if if you know that there's predators everywhere you have to think about it how can you control all these weird predators you put rules out there you put laws out there right but what happens when you put laws out there that are going to hold a predator captive. A predator doesn't want to be controlled. A predator doesn't want to be held captive. A predator does not want to take accountability because a predator feels like they're doing nothing wrong. A predator feels like they're just, they're just, you know, living off their own instincts. You know, they feel like that's just who I am, you know, um, and it's not, it might not be ideal to your own, to your, to your lifestyle and your viewpoints. So this is where the police, the judge, the courthouse, the laws that are designed for humans um, come in. We have laws, you know, we have laws in order to work as a civilization Um we have rules in order not to to kill each other and destroy one another on a daily basis but guess what the narcissist does not like rules in the narcissist world there are no rules they're like animals they feel like i don't have any rules i'm roaming free even if they know that there's rules they're always going to try to break them you know and they're not going to feel bad about it so a lot of these laws are designed to protect predators. And that's that's the hardest part to accept because, you know, when it comes to laws, it's almost like these laws are set up, but they're basically saying, hey, we're going to protect predators until they get caught, you know. Because if, if, if the narcissist was, had to pay the price for every crime that they've done, emotional abuse and all these other things that you can't even get compensated for, you can't get compensated from being in a relationship with a narcissist and them wasting your time unless you have money and, 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 and you know, access to those type of things and, and, and actually um, make a contract with these type of people. And this is why people get married because it's a contract, you know, um, so that you have some type of security that this person isn't just using you and wasting your time. And they're just, it's to, to kind of get more trust in knowing that this person isn't just you know baiting you in for for resources and, and taking advantage of you that's what the whole contract is about because you know uh, these people are like wild animals and the narcissist uses marriage and contracts um you know to exploit you because um when they get married they're getting married for the purpose of them getting them getting more supply they're getting more supply than than um you know 
um, than they than they than they would get if they were single, you know. Um, so that's the only purpose. A lot of times, and a lot of times they're targeting you, you know. They're not doing it for the right reasons. They're not doing it because they want to survive together with you because they're careless. They just want what they want. But a lot of these laws are set up this way because imagine if they were just locking the narcissist up for emotionally abusing you. That would piss the narcissist off even more and they would commit more crimes, right? So the laws are designed this way because narcissists are predators. They don't stop once they target a victim, once they target someone, like you're targeted forever in their world. You know, it's only a matter of time. If they can't hunt you down right away, they're going to wait months or years to hunt you down again. You know, um, and a lot of times you'll bump into these people even years later. You know, like, you know, and it's it's because they've preyed on you already and and that predator wants to finish you off. So you bumping into these people or them popping up months, years later, it's not coincidental. It's because they've preyed on you. And once you became prey, they're not going to stop. It's something in them, their natural instincts to to attack to kill you off you know um so with that being said you know we, like i said we live in a world where a lot of these laws are set up this way because they already know that these predators are going to go back and forth with you and they're just going to get more savage if they lock these people up behind bars you know, they know that when the narcissist comes out of jail, they're not going to change much. They're going to learn not to get caught. So the number one rule in this narcissist world for these, the, the number one rule that narcissists have made up for themselves is not to get caught. They know they're animals. They know that. They feel like you're the one that's programmed and you don't know what's going on. And they feel like you're judging them for no reason. They're the victim. They're, you know, they feel like you're the perpetrator. They feel like, hey, it doesn't matter if I'm sick, twisted, and I'm a pedophile and I'm a weirdo. It doesn't matter if if if, if I'm a murderer, if I'm a rapist. I, it does, all these things don't matter because it's in my nature and you're basically trying to judge me off of that or you're trying to make up rules for me and you're trying to make me feel bad about my 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 natural instincts that's how the narcissist feels they feel like they're really not doing nothing they feel like everyone else is programmed or brainwashed you know um so this is why it's very important to understand that you're living in the narcissist world. Once you wake up, you know you live in the narcissist world. You know that these predators are everywhere. They're cops, they're, they're judges, they're doctors, you know. And you also have to think about it. Women, a lot of women get preyed upon by narcissists because narcissists are sexual deviants. They're like animals. They just want to have sex all day and, and hunt for food. That's all they want to do is hunt for food and have sex. And, and all of them have weird, different kinks and stuff, you know. So um, once you wake up and you know I live in a world full of predators you don't live in that old world where you used to live, you know, where you used to walk around thinking everybody was nice or you used to wave at your neighbor thinking they were nice neighbors. Now you look at everyone different. Now you're skeptical about everyone. Now you look at people and even though you know, you think you know them, you know that a part of you doesn't really know them because you don't know their animalistic side. Narcissists have